well, let's lay some framework for everyone listening. My buddy Mark Pierre, we go back to surfing barbers, yeah, and like circa 1998, 97, Gosh. probably, yeah, 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 probably, and um, I. I joined the Coast Guard, and you were like a year behind me and went to my same yep. boat that yep. I was stationed on. Yep, the Vigilant. The Vigilant. Shout out to the Vigilant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's like, do you know Pierre? I was like, I don't know a Pierre. Like, because I didn't have your last name top yeah. of mind, right? Yeah. Jackson. That guy. Jackson. Hey, he's you know Pierre? Guy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know what's so, yeah, he's the one who got me. He goes, hey, hey, you know Oak? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, like, I don't no. know Oak. Nope, I don't know anyone named Oak. And he's like, um, Derek Okahashi. And I was like, I don't know, I might. And he like shows me a picture. I was like, "Oh yeah, I know yeah. Derek. Bro. Oh, been, I've known him since we've been like eleven years old, twelve years old." What? Yeah, cause same with like your my last name wasn't something you really knew, right? Never. What? Um, how long did it take? Were you like first couple days on the boat, and or is like it was, no, like, a this few is months? months. This is months. Yeah, months down the road. Cause you know how it is when you first get on the boat. Nobody even wants to. They're just like shut <laughs> up. Wants, no one wants to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> such a weird thing yeah 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 so you grew up Mililani yep surfing barbers I want yep. to ask you how is that because you're I see you surf now and bro by the way like you just surf better as you get older thanks man <laughs> I don't yeah, feel like it I feel like, like my back oh. is always sore <laughs> nah I saw that video Malia posted I'm like bro and I, I was thinking of because I my plan was to move home and raise my kids pretty much the way you're raising yours yeah and I don't but uh do you growing up in Mililani as like a surfer? Yeah, is it? Were you one of the only ones? You know, because it's like you, Bam, Bacalso, Kiko Bacalso, who's a little older than you. But I didn't know like like going to in Ava Beach, everybody like bodyboarded or surfed yeah. or something. Yeah. Or if you probably if you go to like Kahuku, I'm sure choke people or why? Yeah, no, there was a big pack of like rippers in yeah. Milani that like a lot of people don't even know about. There was like um like just just in like my little vicinity of my neighborhood. Like Bam lived all the way on the other side of Milani, but just in my neighborhood alone, we had like um Jero and then uh, my friend Travis and my other friend Shane and they were all surfing barbers too and i'm sure there was like other people who were surfing oh, other spots were. and ripping yeah were yeah. they just not coming to like the the pavilion side where Probably. we all hung out yeah yeah because yeah. we had our own special little crew yeah there. yeah 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 so if anyone's listening to that there's you know like uncle joe kaivi or yeah. any auntie gail or what is tara's dad's name Uncle Roy. Uncle Roy. Yeah, yeah. I saw Tara a few couple months ago. Oh, nice. Yeah, at a restaurant. Oh, but good. at Barber's, and Barber's, uh, they call it White Plains now, but uh, White Plains, Barber's area, in the days that you still needed a pass. Yeah, and the Navy the, League pass. Or or right after, it was just empty. Yeah. The waves are seemed better back then. Maybe the sand was different because of the Maybe. lagoon and stuff. Yeah. And, uh the restaurant the restaurant was still going and we just had like a thing yeah. from the older crew like yeah. nate and nick guys yeah and yeah to like mine and yeah. then yours it was the best all the uncles aunties my parents would drop us off you remember matt bodyboarder matt yeah it, like his parents would drop us in the morning and my parents would pick us up or vice versa yeah in the summers 7 a.m to 7 p.m yep we'd just be down there all day like eating cereal Dry Simon. I remember Keone used to always bring a can of Vienna sausage and a bag of rice. Uncle remember Cyril's Cyril? Keone. Cyril's boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. our friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would always have Vienna sausage <laughs> yeah. and a bag of rice. And he would always share it with me. I'd just like stick my hand in yeah, it. And yeah, yeah. Just be eating it. Put a little salt and vinegar in the rice pot so it stays good. <laughs> it was so cool because it, it's different um, growing up in, uh, in like on a beach like that. Like, And I don't even say like growing up like in the surf world, like growing up on a beach like that everyone's all these different ages and everyone's like taking care of each other it's all like this big brother little brother little sister big sister vibe uncle, uncle auntie. auntie yeah and um it's a whole different thing from when like you just go to school and you're in fifth grade and you only hang out with fifth graders and sixth graders are old and fourth graders are young yeah in the beach environment it's like all based on like how much time have you spent on that beach what's mm -hmm. your skill level in surfing <coughs> and we're all just out there just like giving each other cracks and yeah and sharing boards and sharing boards sharing boards yeah hey, like try your board yeah looking oh, out like for, try for each other, yeah, yeah, yeah getting in trouble together like freaking sneaking around and like 
starting fires or first time smoking cigarettes, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I stole this, so I was like, let's go try this, let's go try this, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was the best, yeah, 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 so I, I envisioned I would move home and kind of give my kids that, and thus far, I haven't, I haven't done it, and living at Mililani is part of it, because, like, if I, I'm busy, you know, if I get yeah. home at 5 p.m., yeah, depending on the time of year, even if I made it down, we don't have time to surf, but your dad, shout out yeah. rest in peace yeah yeah he would um he i would always be like oh because I, I would look yeah because i didn't have siblings so i show up to the beach my, my siblings lived in florida okay so my siblings were the people at the beach so yeah. i'd be like oh if i get here at this time these people are gonna be here kamu and kikoa guys so nana kuri will come band guys will come shortly yeah. after Mark guys got to drive from Mililani, so that'll be a little bit later. We'll be there at 4.45. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, it was like clockwork, you know? Yeah, it really was. We yeah. all, and it was so funny because we would always show up the same time as Uncle Roy and Uncle Leroy. Oh, really? And we always pulled up at the same exact time, and then the Willikers in their 57 Chevy yeah. with, like, 10 kids the, wait, in it. Wait, the Willikers. Who's yeah, that? Uncle Bobby and Kainoa and Alika and Dane. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. They rolled yeah. deep. Remember in the, yeah. in the 57 Chevy, boards just, like, ratchet strapped to the top? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember that yeah. oh i have a story i don't think i can tell that story here no that's okay when i was young before marriage sh shortly after high school i went to a certain establishment and uh then he un uncle bobby <laughs> he he was like hey come we're having party whatever so they had like a potluck and then i was looking at his this girl a little bit older than me and i was like I know you from somewhere. And she was like, oh, no, oh, you don't no. know me. You don't know me from anywhere. And then I was like, <gasps> and she was like, oh, my God. Shh. And I was you like, had to do it. Yeah. yeah I was you like, should have just acted like it never happened. I should have. <laughs> I was like, we go hang out. <laughs> She's like, no. She's like, not now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I digress. That's funny. Do you That's think, funny. Do you think growing up at Barber's, like, with that whole lifestyle, if you had it, you would still join the Coast Guard? No, I think my life would be totally different. I think I joined the Coast Guard because I grew up at Barber's and grew up around so many people who did search and rescue in the Coast yeah. Guard. Dennis, and we Tom. Would, yep, Dennis yeah. and Tom, and we would be, and Bob, and Roger. we would be, um, we would be always out in the water in the evening, and then the helicopter would go take its evening flight, and right, we were right on its takeoff path. So every oh. evening we would see the helicopter take off and do its, you know, its turn right above us, right where we were surfing. And everyone stops and looks up and it's just like, whoa, like that's, how does this even happen? You know? And yeah. then I turned, um, I turned 19 years old and I didn't really have a very clear path. And I started looking into the recruiting offices Actually, the, right here in this little area. Was Tom still recruiting? Yeah, yeah. it was like a few doors down. There. Yeah, it was a few doors down. Um, no, Tom Auntie wasn't Val. recruiting. No, it was... Um, Auntie Val recruited me. I didn't know her as Barbara's crew, but yeah. they were like, oh, yeah, we have all the same friends. I was like, oh. And then Tom, yeah, Tom hooked it yeah. up. Tom hooked it up with her, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. probably right. I probably just missed her. Yeah. I probably just missed her. But, um, yeah, I just kind of was actually looking into the army because they were offering the big bonus oh really stuff. yeah yeah and i went to the beach one day excuse me um and dennis was working the tower and he goes hey what 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 the hell are you doing with your life i'm like i don't, I don't know I'm he used to, to tell me out. the same yeah, yeah i'm about to go surf yeah. i don't know <laughs> like gonna go cruise with my friends after like that's it yeah and and he's like oh and I, and I told him, ah, I went and actually talked to the Army recruiter. He goes, oh, fuck that. You don't, you don't talk to the Army recruiter. If you're going to join the military, you're going to join the Coast Guard. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. All right. And he's like, yeah, you will be a rescue swimmer. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, hey, isn't that like a really hard just school to graduate? And he's like, nah, you'll be fine. And the, the rest is history. I went and I talked to the recruiter, signed up, studied really hard for my ASVAB, did good enough on it to qualify to be a rescue swimmer, you know, went through yeah. the whole process, ended up on the, on the vigilant boat and did almost two years on that before I started, um, rescue swimmer training. I want to talk about the vig and yeah. the crate. Yeah. But, um, to give people at home contacts or whoever's listening to this on the treadmill or whatever, 
Dennis is the, like the mayor of Barb's. He's this guy from California, but he's like the darkest guy on the beat. He's like yeah. pure white guy, but the darkest red man on the beach. He wore like, a Speedo. He would wear Speedo sometimes. He wore a red Speedo <laughs> Yeah, when he was working. <laughs> At, well, eight pack, like <laughs> yeah. just shredded, just shredded like a god. And then he, I would see him jog from the ba- from the air station down to barbers yep and i used to think that's so long because i i never been a you know i can sprint i was pretty right. fast but i couldn't yeah anyway so you just see dennis jogging and board shorts and just living this sort of like top gun tom cruise yep. rescue swimmer life yep. and he'd be and you know dennis i love you know i love him but he has strong personality he knows yep. it and he would but he was the guy to bark at us kids. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? Yeah. Well, you joined the Coast Guard, you know? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I thank him for that because he, he pushed me into the Coast Guard, too. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad I got out of the Coast Guard, too, but, you know, went reserves and then it went the way it went. But uh, I'm super fortunate that I did it. It changed my life around. So Dennis, yeah. And so Dennis yeah. being this, like, fitness god looking guy, and then he's telling, like, us kids, oh, go be a rescue swimmer. I I didn't think you were going rescue swimmer. Like I mean not that you're not yeah. a good surfer and can swim and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But you think of that as like that's like our Navy SEALs of yeah. Coast Guard, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh wow, Mark Mark wants that smoke. Like he's like, like he's he's yeah. really about that. And so when you went to your first ship, which was my first ship too, yep. but we we missed each other. For the people at home, it's called being a non rate. So you're um basically just like a slave to the ship. Yeah, and you just do whatever they tell you to. I mean, yeah, trash, uh, feces. Up like in the middle of the night, like just watching generators. Watching, gen- just watching staring at a ocean. machine. Yeah. Watching the ocean yeah. or like when you had a migrant patrol. Yeah, you catch these, these immigrants. Yep. Sometimes they're using the bathroom on the decks and then you have to go clean it. Yeah. Sanding, just dirty, tough. Yeah work with a crazy schedule with messed up sleep little sleep like it's it's pretty it's pretty it's nuts. rough and so and they treat lower ranking people like guard you know it's it's an indoctrination process for sure yeah yeah and uh dennis told me it's like it's gonna be the like worst thing that you never want to do again but like you'll have all these stories it'll be yeah. fine and yeah sure enough but uh it built character i needed it um, I was a punk, you know, leaving Hawaii, and I needed it for sure. But how was your experience? So I remember you telling me people were doubting you. They are like, you're going to be a rescue swimmer? No way. Yeah, yeah. I think it was one of those things where they um, they just judge you, like, based on, like, boom, their first glance. Oh, you're, like, five foot eight, and you're so small, and you don't, like, I wasn't really, like, I didn't have, like, a big, like, um, presence or a big ego about things, and... The, their initial thought was like, oh, well, so-and-so didn't make it, so you're not going to make it. And there was this particular person on that ship who was even more of a fit. Like, he's a freak. Yeah. Fit, like, physique-wise yeah. and yeah. capable, you know, abilities. But his mental. He he yeah, drops out of school of mentally. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he's he's a friend of mine, too. I know you never really met him, yeah? No. But uh, he's a good guy. He's a friend of mine. He's a pro bodyboarder. Yeah. But he dropped out of it, so they were like, well, if he can't make it, you, you can't, can't make, make it. it. And they applied that to you. They yeah. applied that right to me. And it was perfect because I didn't know him, and I never met him, and I never seen a picture of him. It was just all these, like, mythical stories that, like, I never – I was on my – I was doing my thing. Like, it was just – I had horse blinders on, and I, uh, I, like, strategically attached myself to people on that ship, you know, because what was there, 75 of us? Yeah, something like, like that. 80 at any given time. There was just a few people and a few JOs who really, like, I was like, well, these people, these are good people, and I just attached myself to that group yeah. and just became a part of that group, and when we were at port calls, we'd go on long runs, and when we would do rounds together, we'd do, on that bar, we're going to do pull-ups. On this corner, we're going to do push-ups, and, like, that was just our life. Yeah. And the rest of the time on the boat, I was just um, um, <laughs> Richie Parra. He he went through. He made oh, it yeah, to yeah. be a swimmer too. Yeah. But uh, he uh, he yeah, you know Richie. Yeah, Richie. He was cool like, guy. Hey, whatever you do, you just walk around with a five gallon bucket and a wrench, and nobody will ever bother you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, I walked around with a five gallon bucket and a wrench for two years, <laughs> and people were just like, "Wow, you keep it up." Squared away. Keep yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was like that was I just I just ran with that. 
Yeah. He's always giving me the best advice. And he went through swimmer school a year, like exactly a year before me, and he made it, and we trained together. And that was like, okay, Richie made it. We trained together. I just was like, okay, I'm the same as that. I'm going to go, and I'm going to make it. Did, did, were you like uh, into fitness and swimming and stuff before that? No. No, you surfed. Zero. I just surfed. Yeah. I only surfed. At this age, it makes sense, you know, closer yeah. to 40. Yeah. But at the time, too, I probably would, like, I didn't think I could do it. And so that's probably one of the main reasons I didn't even try. Yeah. I just didn't think I could. Yeah. yeah. That mindset's super important, yeah. I think I had something to prove to myself as well because I was never, like, um, like a super athlete or anything like that. I think I had yeah. some people in my life who would, like, <laughs> never thought, had, you know, from teachers and family who were like, oh, you know, had their own vision for me of what my success story looked like to them. Yeah. Um, and so I was kind of like a prove them wrong, but then also like, what are, they, are they right? Like, I had to prove myself wrong too. I have to prove myself right. I didn't know you had that edge. Wrong. <laughs> I, I, as a. I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, that's good though. You're kind of like like Nick, like Nick Mita. Yeah, my yeah. Bro- my brother-in-law-in-law, but uh, he we had him in here. Yeah, and I watched parts of that one. He's Mr. Aloha too. Yeah, but he's also got this edge, you know. Yeah. He, and yeah, at it, I kind of knew it of Nick sooner, but even our other brother-in-law Bryce, he's like, oh, I didn't know Nick was that like edgy, you know, like that driven. And I'm like, bro, of course, you don't. He's a become great like one of the best in Japan and yeah. pro surfer without that edge, right? Exactly. I didn't know you had it. That's but I think that's like a tribute to your dad and. You got like, you know, you just keep it cool, but then when you have a certain edge yeah. too, that's which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Hey, aloha, everyone. This is Derek Okahashi, host of Podcast Hawaii. Thank you for listening. I hope you're enjoying the show. I have two things to ask. Whether you're listening to this on a streaming platform or on YouTube, please go comment and follow and do all the things to gas us up and keep us going. And in that comment, let me know who you'd like for me to have a conversation with next. Is there an interesting university professor, someone who owns a business, a controversial person, a politician, whoever you want to see on this show, please let me know in the comment section of whatever platform you're on. Also, I am a real estate agent and a real estate team leader. My small team, Core Team Hawaii, is one of the top real estate teams in all of Hawaii. So if you have anything in real estate, (laughs) if you have any need at all in real estate, please think of Core Team Hawaii first. Go to coreteamhawaii.com. The link will be in the description of all of these shows moving forward. Book a call with me. Let's get you taken care of in real estate. Back to the show. Do you think that... Now that you know you have a business, so if people don't know, Mark and his wife Malia are my um, media people, not for this uh, or my real estate YouTube channel, but for any listings, any real estate specific stuff to selling, we um, we try to only use them. Um, do you think that making it as an AST, uh, so if uh, aviation survival technician, rescue swimmer, if you haven't. This may not may or may not be cool to say, but like Ashton Kutcher in the movie, um, making it through that school did that change everything? You're like, I could start a business. I could, yeah, I could yeah. do anything. I'll explain to my kids that they can do every, anything. Like making it through that school changed everything. For it you? changed. It changed my life a lot. It because it gave me that. Um, it was it was like a this achievable goal that was really really hard, and once I made it, I was like, oh man, like I can do more. I can. It doesn't stop here and that's what you see like a lot of guys they either graduate the school and then um and then like as, as soon as they graduate the school they're like oh what, what's next i'm training for an iron man or i'm gonna go and switch over and be a special operator or i'm gonna go fly jets for the air force like a lot of people it, there's a lot of fluidity mm. think a lot of people um um exit sooner than later because they just the goal the goal was to make it yeah you know the goal wasn't that's to, to do it for 20 years the goal was to graduate the school and to do the job for a few years. And, and unfortunately, like the job doesn't really like stack onto itself and grow as um, unless you really want to like dive into, you know, the policy and the leadership side of things. But a lot of us who join to be a rescue swimmer, that's really not the thing that's on our mind. Right. Yeah. But yeah, definitely like graduating swimmer school. I was like, it was the hardest thing I've, I've ever done. Um, and I guess like one of the like like the simplest way to sum up like graduating that school is like you just have to be okay with going underwater and blacking out on your own will. And that was that's like a hard thing to get past. 
Everyone <clears throat> happens to everyone. Almost. It right. almost happens to everybody at one point or another where you just black out and someone pulls you out of the pool. And, they give and it's all CPR. on your own. No one's like holding you down until you black out. Uh, nah, mm. I've, I, I've only seen CPR done on students a few times. Really? Yeah. <laughs> only a yeah. few times. Like, yeah. Eh. Usually real quick. When I was in, when I was on the Vigilant in Florida, the Patrick Air Force Base? is the Yeah, where there? we all lived, yeah. I, I lived in the economy because I okay. brought my girlfriend, who's my wife, yeah. and uh, we just rented our own place. And they're like, you could do that? I'm like, yeah, I can do whatever I want if I pay for it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but uh, we were at the pool there, mm -hmm. and there were like some Air Force Special Ops guys. Yeah, yeah. And the guy like drowned in the, like he blacked out in the pool. He, they came up, and they drag him out of the water. And they're all like, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the guy's like still down. Yeah. And the lifeguard, this like young, like 18 year old girl, she's like, oh my God. Like she'd never seen it before. And they were, they were just like happy and cheering and high fiving. And they gave him CPR. He like threw up a little water. And then he's like, oh hell yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's all into it, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, I guess. Whatever they were doing, you guys probably do something similar, huh? Or you got to stay under what? Maybe not the yeah. bro, like, high-fiving about it, but... No, yeah, it's definitely, like, uh, 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 you know, it's an emergency yeah. when that happens. Yeah, you pull the student out of the water and, and... But most people, it happens. I would say within... with Not within just their training, but, like, within the first few years of their career, like, just pushing everyone's pushing each other because it's, like, wow. it's like you're just with this group of people who just pushes the envelope further and further and further hey i bet i can hold my breath for a minute and then do 100 yards underwater i'm like what no you can't i dare you you know like all right yeah. do it and then they like Phew. you just see them they're going they hit 75 and then they just go <laughs> just stop moving like oh shoot get them out so you don't usually have to do cpr no what they just start breathing again when you pull them out yeah usually yeah, usually like when right when someone blacks out, they their first um if their face is underwater, their first instinct isn't to breathe. It's your body just goes into like a little shelter mode and you pull them out of the water and then um sternum rub or like a face slap usually can oh. it, it wakes them up. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen it actually go further than that than like a sternum rub or a face slap. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you uh, maybe they did that to that guy. I don't remember exactly yeah. what happened, but have you had, have, you know, like Wim Hof or either like the other people that train, they, they say like there's a, what is it, mammalian reflex, whatever? I or don't know. You, all of us, like for most people, if you can hold your breath 30 seconds or 45 seconds, that's it. And, but there's this thing that you can train to turn off and like anyone could hold their breath underwater for two minutes if they okay. train. The, have you seen that? No. Oh, really? No. I've seen like Wim Hof and like some of his breathing exercises, but I've never heard of this, the, the theory. Really? No. Yeah, like a lot of big wave surfers do it. Okay. Like they go through this training and apparently you have some reflex. That, can you iPhone Google that? Like Jamie? She's our Jamie. <laughs> but um, there, yeah, there's this thing. I figured you guys would do it. Have, how long can you hold your breath underwater? Then? Uh, like two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Bro, that's well, super I'm resting. Long. No, it's not. That's that's, re super that's fully long. rested. That's fully rested. Um, Sh Shane Dorian put it really good. He goes, "Okay, if you're fully rested and you can hold your breath, so your f the the formula is your fully rested breath hold is four times as long as like your stress breath hold. So like let's say you're surfing um, bigger waves, and your breath hold is two minutes on a static." When you're surfing like big waves and you're, or you know, like in like a, um, like a uh, stressful situation, your breath hold gets cut down to 25% of that. So it's like 30 seconds before you need air or start to panic. 30 seconds is a long hold down though. Like even you yeah. see guys surfing like Waimea, Mavericks, so whatever, when you time it from the drone, they're usually not under 30 seconds. Now they're not because they have vests. Because they have but vests. But back in the days, the 30 second hold under, it was kind of like a norm for really? anything. I think so. Like oh. big water over 20 feet. I've never, I mean, I'm not that guy. <laughs> so. There's definitely been like a minute long hold unders. <sighs> two wave hold, you know, the two, two you know, wave, we've heard, yeah. all heard of the two wave hold under. That's over 30 seconds because Bruh. you know you're talking about 20 second interval yeah. between the waves yeah 
and then the next one holds you under 40 second holds under like imagine that like so that's like your breath hold has to be well over two minutes you know like a three four but a lot of these guys they're holding their breath for like five six minutes like oh. you're you, yeah yeah that's not yeah i don't think i could hold my breath a minute but they train for it yeah i bet i, I you could i you, don't know bro i yeah you got it. i get afraid of big waves me too i was in california and uh Long story short, I hadn't been surfing a long time. Like, you know, it's cold yeah. in the bay. It oh, it changes everything. But had this one. Yeah. There was this one year where I got into it. Something stressful happened. I tried, I f and then I met this guy who I knew, kind of knew from here, from Kauai, and we started surfing together. And I never really been out big, like a big Northwest, and yeah. since I was living here, like yeah. twenty two years old, twenty one years old, and it was like a climbing Northwest, and uh, I forgot how fast that can change, like like a set just doubles in size or more. And I was like, we go out. He's like, bro, it's kind of big. And I'm like, nah, you're better than me. Let's go out. And we go, so we go out and it's pretty good size, you know, like four or five feet. Yeah. And we're no leash. Yeah. Longboarding it. Oh, geez. And we're fine though. Cause there's like a big channel. Maybe like there. ocean beach or something. It's called Davenport. Okay. It's South of OB. There's a big channel. So we're like, we're fine. But then it just started feeling weird. And I was like, Hey, I'm going to go in. He said, me too. So he catches the next one. I was like, okay, I'll catch the one after. And then you just see mountains on the horizon. Like, like I told my uncle who, uncle, Calabash uncle, who's a, would help me shape boards over there. I told him, hey, I, I got scared. Davenport closed out and I was out there with no leash. He was like, closed out? It's like, that bay doesn't close out. He's like, it had to be like 25 feet or something, which mainland style 25 yeah, feet, like 12, that's feet 12 feet or something. That's, was, that's huge. That's so, I was yeah. praying. I was scared. Yeah. But the whole down was probably eight seconds. Or, yeah. Like, it probably wasn't that long. Yeah. But I, it was a eternity to me. I was so scared. Well, because you're scared, too. You're not used to it. You're not prepared for it. Dark. It's cold. dark and it's cold. You can't even really see, like, bubbles going up. That's so dark. And there's, like, kelp touching you. And yeah. So scared. <laughs> cold water is a whole nother. It's different. You ever like, surf in, like, oh, yeah. I've surfed in North, North Carolina. Carolina a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cold water and, like, hurricane surf out there. And even mm -hmm. if it's, like... You know, like three to four out there when the water is freezing. It feels scarier than like five feet here. Huh? We, oh, yeah. 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 Because it's so cold. The water is so cold there. It's like because you're wearing like a, a um, was it, five, four wetsuit <sighs> and gloves and booties and a hood. Uh, and then it, it's like the water it flows into the hood and, it, you know, it freezes your brain. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, man, when that water gets around 40, it's like it's you can only surf for maybe you know like an hour or something so like, like me i could only like some guys are hardcore 10 yeah. seconds under that feels oh like, man oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and it's just dark water the water gets dark there too yeah yeah but it's not it's not doesn't hold nearly as big as uh, california does for sure yeah 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 that's that's like big heavy long period <laughs> swells afterwards i wouldn't I, like if i had to turtle my board because i long boards on the duck yeah. right but if i had to like go under i didn't want to go out I would only surf like knee high for like a month or two. Yeah. I was so scared. Yeah. It's like the normal progression of just being a surfer, like going through your highs and lows. <laughs> Bro, that was all time low. That was the most scared I've ever been. Would you, since you're in a, become an AST, have you gotten more comfortable and, and bigger waves? Yeah, I have. I have. And just uh, not because I've been an AST, like that's not what made me more comfortable in no? big waves. No, I just have like a group of friends who, we push each other and we surf, you know, if we're not out surfing Waimea, like I'm not a big wave surfer by any means. Like I love surfing chest high to double overhead is like, that's, if I could just surf that for the rest of my life, I would, yeah. I'm you know, terrified of, of big waves. So, um, but I have like a good group of friends who like, I just trust fully and we go out and we, you know, we push the limit, we push our limits Who's a little that? bit. Um, Kona, my brother-in-law and then oh, yeah? uh, another friend, Daniel and Aloha and sean and nick and and we go out and we just have like we have a little texturing so when it's big like we go to our spot and we yeah. just we just push our limits a little bit would you would you surf haliva like 10 feet haliva i've never surfed 10 feet haliva the biggest haliva i've surfed is eight feet that's still big though yeah i don't like it it's, i'm yeah. on my backhand and haliva is not like it's it's not an easy wave by any means you yeah. know like there's a there is the guys make it like joel guys Make it look so easy. Joel says how you were good, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah. last time I got the <laughs> funny story is like the last time I got smoked at Haliva, 
I, I went to the I went to the beach and I and I had like I had like a little bit of a step up and I had a I had a five ten and it was like four to six, and uh, and and I and I get on the beach and Joel's on the beach with his baby and and I'm with Mana and I'm watching Mana play and Joel's like oh go out and get some and I was like ah, I might just cruise <laughs> and he's like nah I got Mana I got Mana and I, and I get out there and it's like I just I'm riding a small board so I'm like sitting inside of everybody. Well, that's and uh, could be worse. Out that eight that's foot, called. that eight, the you know, I went to to go for one, and I missed it. And I turn around, and there's like a freaking coconut tree sized wave, and I just got so smoked. That was the longest hold under I had in a while. I was gonna say, and yeah. Haliva kind of drags you in pretty far, yeah. Oh, you come up, and you're like, oh, I'm all the way inside, huh? all the way to the inside. Yeah, yeah, I was halfway in. I surfed it probably five or six feet. Yeah, like on a longboard. Yeah, I, was, I mean, like avalanche is going off. It's huge. Yeah, and bongo was out there. Yeah, had to be bongo. It's like some guy destroying avalanches. But yeah, um, I took off and anyways ate it on the first wave. I only caught like three, four waves, but yeah, I ate it. And when I came up, I was like inside the toilet bowl. And I was like, oh, this is far. Like, yeah, that was a long way. It holds you under a long time. Out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, cause like like two to three for Haleiwa is like super mellow. It's actually almost like too weak to surf sometimes. It can get barbers ish when it's yeah. small. Yeah, yeah, and then or like the left is fun, and then like three to four or five is like it's like a like a rippable zone, and then like six it starts to do the thing where it pulls all the water off the reef, and it becomes like a, a sleeping giant a little it was, bit. It was just at that threshold. That yeah, day. yeah, was, yeah. It gives your heart pumping, <laughs> yeah. and the current starts to get real strong. And then yeah, the biggest I've ever been out there is like with eight foot sets, and like I was I was out of out of my league. Dane <laughs> back Dane charges. Dane loves it. Dane's not yeah. Dane. Shout out surfer and Dane. Dane can't say his nickname. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him Brada Dane. <laughs> Brada. <laughs> oh, I love that guy. He's always like, oh yeah, we should just go out. I'm like, oh, they're holding the Eddie right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't the Eddie on right now? He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have a 10-0? I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> he's and he makes his own boards. Yeah, he does. He like make he's he's a real soul surfer. He is. Makes his own boards, glasses his own boards and sands yeah. them. Yeah. Goes out big. Yeah. Like Dane is nuts. Dane's nuts. And no Instagram. No. Or if he does have one, it's like short lived. He'll post a few things and take it down. And like doesn't tell anyone necessarily oh, i'm gonna be out today and you just see a picture like, is that dane yeah 10 feet he's always <laughs> on it like if the waves are good and he's not working and or if he's not you know doesn't you know not with the family he's out he's yeah. out surfing yeah dane's nuts yeah yeah, yeah. and then oh, I, I forgot to mention like as far as like milani servers macy macy's like the the best mace yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. mace i love macy he likes surfing kind of more mid-sized waves too, yeah. Yep, he's. I would say like he is like a specialist in like that head high range where he's. He's he's the best guy like for he just he's so he's still so good you know like he's in his mid forties and he's still doing, full rotation air reverses yeah. on closeout sections like there's not a lot of guys doing that and he still just surfs and trains jujitsu. Every single day. <laughs> and when you moved home, when you got stationed back here, he was your neighbor. Was the, that was the coolest thing. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, Macy be, like became my neighbor. We lived a few houses away from each other. And it was during COVID times. So neither one of us were working a lot. So we were just going surfing. Like me and Macy surfed like, together. I felt like we were surfing every morning together. Yeah, We'd yeah. go and get our Starbucks and go surf. And it was so cool. Because, you know, like growing up at Barber's, I've always looked up to him so much. Like the coolest thing when I was like a young amateur surfer was getting um, sponsored by the same team as Macy. Oh, we, yeah. we both got sponsored by Mata. Uh, our friend Philip Pendleton, uh, who was the Mata rep, um, he he saw something in us and he, he sponsored both of us. And so like Macy was the pro and I was the amateur guy. Yeah, yeah. And I just got to hang out with them for a few, it was it felt maybe it was like a year or so that that we kind of did this and it was it was so cool. It was the best. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of ended there for me, though, because I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be a pro, so I got to, like, figure out something else. Interesting, though. You might have been able to or, or still be able to in a way because nowadays if you can 
you surf good like you do and you can pair that with media somehow and have like a YouTube or whatever. I think about that a lot. There's a version of a pro, like a lifestyle pro. A lifestyle. I think about yeah. that a lot because I love trying out like um, I've been working with Tor from Prism Surfboards for yeah. a long time and we're always trying out new things and I always think like I've been, I, I probably have like 10 or 15 Prism boards already and I'm like how cool would it be to like have reviews on all these boards of all these little double up waves that we surf and we can talk about the differences in them. And, and now that I have a family and kids that want to surf all the time, I'm like, how yeah. that could be like a really cool thing. You guys um, can make a cool thing for sure. I think we can make a cool thing. We, we've talked about it. We're like, okay, we need, what do we need? We need a jet ski. I'm like, okay, we just need a jet ski. That's it. Surf gear and dive gear and fishing gear. In and that's family, the lifestyle. Bro, your family, you, I could see you guys becoming one of the faces of surfing in Hawaii, actually. <laughs> Thanks, man. That means For a real. lot. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't like to talk about the kids too much for, for everyone else to think about, but, or, you know, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you guys could be. I appreciate that, man. What do you, what do you think about, I had um, Kyle Foyle in here. Do you know Kyle Foyle? Do, oh, yeah. L Lieutenant Kyle Foyle, lifeguard. Lifeguard, yeah. 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 He yep. was in here like a week, two weeks ago. Yep. Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, we have like, you know, I used to surf, but hardly ever surf now. But uh, yeah. jujitsu too in common, and he used to yep. come to our open mats and stuff. Yeah. But we were talking about, you know, North Shore Lifeguard is like the pinnacle of lifeguarding in the oh, world, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, we were talking about that a bit. And uh, how do you think, like, if you become a North Shore Lifeguard, there's this vetting, whether it's an actual vetting process or just like a natural selection process. And you know, everyone in that, in those towers are like hammers, right? Yeah. As an AST, and I want to I set you up to, you know, talk about AST in any yeah. sort of negative way, but I look at like Bosun's mates. These are people that drive boats in the Coast Guard. Yeah. And I think, bruh, you're from Iowa. Just because you went Bosun mate school, I'm not going out to Mavericks with you. Right. Or right. I'm not, yeah. I'm not going north shore when it's 20 yeah. feet they're holding the eddy because you learned how to drive a boat in the ast world i w just being biased being a hawaii surfer yeah yeah if someone's gonna have to jump into 20 foot waves i think it should be someone who grew up surfing yeah not a swimmer like, yeah not michael phelps yeah yeah how is that like like lifeguarding on the north shore versus ast they both to the layman would seem like a similar thing Right, right. But is there that? Is there that like? Eh, Definitely. This is a, a third class I call. It's Eddie's grandkid or whatever. Like, yeah. Even though there's a chief available, he's going out on this mission. Or how does that work? Like, how is it different or same? No, there is a there is a thing to it. Like, um, yeah. Like, there's no there's no um, you know, thing to be an AST that says, oh, you need to be born and raised in the biggest waves of Hawaii <laughs> or Northern California. It's like no, you you you. You pass a test and then you put your name on this list and you go to this school and, you know, like every year they take about 100 people to go to rescue swimmer school and then, you know, they put them in the rescue swimmer box and they shake it up and, yeah. you know, maybe 15 or 20 of them comes out the other side wow. and graduates. And then, you know, those graduates go to their units and they learn the, the specific skill sets required at those units. So, like, when we get a new guy who comes to Hawaii, we take them in the ocean and we get them acquainted to the ocean. Doesn't mean they're like ready to be surfing Waimea or Sunset or Pipe or anything like that. Um, most of us aren't, you yeah. know. Um, but they do definitely have like a baseline standard that that we that we require to to do the job. Um, I would say like from the most of the guys that I've worked with and all the guys that I work with now, like they're all capable of being in really big surf yeah. and, and, and holding their own. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's in not the always the case. Is it different open ocean versus like on a cliff? Big difference. Yeah. 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 And then we're, we're, we have all these like baseline standards that we reach, right? Like you have to be able to, um, do cliff rescues. You have to be able to do cave rescues. You have to be able to do open ocean rescues, um, breaking surf rescues. Um, wow. We're different. We're different than lifeguards. Like lifeguards, like I think of like when I think of like the gnarliest watermen, I think of like the pipe and Waimea lifeguards. Yeah, they're the first people who come to my mind. So I asked Kyle, who I, I don't remember which one he said is the hardest, but he was like, "Oh no, 
He said Keiki's. He's like, that's oh, probably the yeah, hardest. Yeah. I that's the hardest that. tower. He's like, that's the most nuts tower. Cause that's where most people die. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Because he's like, there's this big sandy area. The internet's made it so it anyway, looks so beautiful. People come. It's beautiful. The shore breaks nuts. Clark Little's made it famous. You know, like all these things. And yeah. he's like, more than pipe, more than Haliva. He's like, pipe, people know not there's to get a stigma. in that water. Yeah. Like, it's like Keiki doesn't have the same stigma, but it has the same energy as pipe. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I never even, uh, yeah, that's, that whole, sh- that whole stretch, that whole stretch of beach, like, past, you know, from, from uh, Waimea all the way to Sunset, it's, it's just such a heavy water. Yeah, it's yeah. Those guys are, and all those guys, they all surf it. Like, like, uh, Luke Shepherdson's such a great example of winning the Eddie on his day of work. Like, he surfed his heat, that was his lunch break. Yeah. Like, Kyle, there you go. Kyle was saying he's super proud of him because he, he was like, when he was younger, you know, a little punk, you know, like a little bit of a punk guy. Yeah. But he's like matured so much so rapidly. And I made the comment to him. I was like, it seems like he approached it like we won, not he won. And he was like, yeah, bro. He was like, we won. He brought us all with him. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. pretty cool to see. They have yeah. a they have a really, I man, I have nothing but respect for um, the city and county lifeguards. Bro, it. Yeah. To surf your heat and go back to work, yeah, like go back yeah. into the towers. I love, I love them. Like, like it's so funny because like it might be goofy, but like every time I walk past the, the, a lifeguard stand, like I just look up and I wave. Yeah, yeah. just because like I want them to know that, dude. Thank you guys. First yeah. of all, like thank you, and like I see you. You know, you guys are amazing. Yeah, you Imagine know the guys and girls with. up there are freaking amazing, and they are. It's like they're like they're mystical because during the summertime. They'll sit up in those towers and they're just like, I don't know, they must meditate or something because they sit up there for 12 hours, right? Like, what is there? They do six to six. Yeah, I don't know. I think they do six to six, three or four days a week. And because one of the lifeguards was telling me, I was like, I was like, oh, it must be so cool to like just be on the beach and watch all these surfers. He's like, yeah, but for six months out of the year, it's totally flat. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man. That's when I would like lose my mind, I think. What about like at Barb's, right? Where we grow? That would be so fun. I used to hang yeah. in the lifeguard towers. Yeah. And uh and just just sit in there, play the ukulele. little red ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play ukulele, talk story with them. Yeah. Shout outs to Marv. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's crazy growing up here. It's the best. Yeah, the the whole the lifeguard lifeguarding and AST thing. What is it have have you had to rescue people? Like have you helped, yeah. like you like people been blacked out and you pull them up in the basket or Yeah. What's yeah. an AST do? You know cuz part of not this show necessarily, but by nature part of this podcast I I think about how much I lack direction and stuff as an 18, 19, like 16 yeah. to 22 year old. Yeah. And I hope some of them or some of their parents show us this. Say, hey, go listen to this guy, Mark. Like, yeah, you could be an AST. Like, you yeah, could, do, you yeah. could join the Coast Guard. Like, I would say being an AST is the best job in the military. In the whole military. Yeah. It, I, I, I think it has. To, I think I would say, I mean, I'm, bi- I'm, you know, I'm biased to it because like if you are a surfer from Hawaii, being an AST is the best job in the military. Or if you're stationed like Alaska, it's an experience. You jump into that ocean. Yeah, you're gonna push yourself. You're gonna push your limits. Like Alaska is known for like having like a really, a really like high speed shop, like where they are working hard and they're training super hard and um, they are pushing themselves. A lot of the guys are like world class hunters. A lot of the guys surf big waves out there. Um, It's a really it's, I think, I, I can't, I've never been stationed there. I've done some training there, and um, it seems like it would be, like, a pretty amazing experience. Yeah. Even if you're from Hawaii to go there, because it's an island, too. It's an island with a ton of energy, just like Hawaii is. Where the Coast Guard Station is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of them up there, and both both of those places are, you know, they're they're gnarly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're gnarly, and that's that's why we're there. Um, but... Yeah, so to but to back up a little bit, like being an AST stands for Aviation Survival Technician, but mostly commonly referred to as helicopter rescue swimmers. Swimmers, yeah. That's what we do. We work at Coast Guard air stations, and we provide the air station and the the helicopter unit with a someone to jump out and to pull people out of the water. And we're all EMT qualified. Um, 
we have all trained in doing cliff rescues and cave rescues and high surf rescues. So, um, do a lot of training. Yeah. We do a lot like, of training, homie, mostly training. You, you guys can work out like uh, every, every military member is like allotted some time to work out. Yeah. But you guys like could spend a lot of your week. We spend a lot of fitness, our week right? on, yeah, we spend a lot of our week, um, doing physical training and then also doing like helicopter operations training. Yeah. Yeah. De- on that, Dennis said that they would do training and in the middle of the night, they drop him in the middle of the ocean mm-hmm. with like a P-perb or something like a, yeah. a positioning device that you yeah. let off Yeah. and then they leave and come back yeah. to find him. Yeah. You guys do that? Yeah, that's normal. So you're in the middle, like a mile, two miles out, whatever. F- yeah, further. Further. Yeah, yeah. miles you out. You go five miles out to train. And you, how long are you sitting there by yourself at like two it's in the morning? P- well, we don't go training at two in the morning. We'll go training at like nine, eight, eight o'clock at night. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's still dark. It's just yeah. as dark. It's just as dark. But um, we're just sleeping at two in the morning unless we're on a rescue. We're yeah. Not, yeah, we're not training. How long did they? So they it go back. Five. They go back and touch down at the station and then come back to get you. Or oh no, they'll usually we call it we call it a vector and it's basically just like it's an emergency procedure that we train where you lose a rescue swimmer in the water and you have to relocate that rescue swimmer based on you know the original position um, and then signs and signals from the rescue swimmer in the water to the helicopter. Right. So as soon as they take off, like like if it's at night and they can't see me, the first thing that the helicopter is going to do is going to flash a light like a strobe uh-huh. and that that tells me oh they can't see me so so you light off your beacon yep so i'll just turn on my strobe and then yeah. they can usually see me and if they don't then i just get if you know for some reason strobe malfunctions i have a radio and i have an e yeah. um that i can that i can light off to. oh that's nuts but um there's definitely like been a lot of times when you know they you I, it has never happened to me personally, but where there's so many people in the water that you, you start pulling people out of the water and the plane gets full and then they'll leave they gotta go get the back. rescue swimmer on scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or they'll run out of gas and they like, we're, the, you know, we're in the water and they just have to go. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. That happened to my friend at Jaws a few years back on a pretty big day. Jaws? At night. Yeah. He went, they went to go pull someone out of the water who was uh, stranded on a kayak. And long story short, the my friend got put in the water and they ran out of gas and they left him and he was he was out right outside of jaws and but not breaking the, yeah it was breaking but he's he where, the, he's he where the, it's breaking he's outside of it but he swam in through the channel he said it was the, the scariest swim of his life cuz it's you know it's pitch black and the water's super deep and the and there was way it wasn't 40 foot jaws but it was like it was well, like jaws said it was has like to be big 10 to 15 it doesn't have to be that big no yeah, I've seen it break like less than twenty feet, like cap, oh, really? cap off and 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 go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what? When you come in, there's no beat. Isn't it like a cliff side? I, I, yeah. The, um, there was actually fire rescue was there guiding him in, and then one guy met him out on a rescue board about half when he was halfway in. Oh. Yeah, it was kind of nuts. It was kind of crazy the way the yeah. whole thing, the whole thing went down. But those situations happen once in a while, where you know, yeah. uh, like a series of decisions are made that when we look back at it, we're like, Fuck, we shouldn't have done it like that, you know? Yeah, but yeah. it's like, we learn from those. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think more kids should join the, mm-hmm. the military. I mean, you get your, you get a VA loan. The best thing. A GI Bill. Yep. Um, it, you know, and people complain to me like, oh, it's hard to make it. And I'm like, okay, how old are you? If, if you're active duty, it would, you'd never go hungry and you'd have house, you know, like, I, it's it might suck for you. For me, when I was gonna join, they were like, people were like, you of all people, you're like defiant. You don't want to listen to people, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm not doing anything with my life at the yeah. time. Yeah, and it's like it might suck for you. You might go to a ship where they don't treat you well, and you got to work hard. But it'll build character. You'll be better for it if you make it through it. You know. I, th- I know more. I think it'll just shape more men and women. And yeah. Just yeah. In all facets to just be stronger. Yeah. I'm not saying you should get poor treatment, but you know you're on a, p- a, sh- a piece of steel with eighty people for months at a time. And yeah. Tensions are gonna rise. And yeah. Certain hierarchy and. For sure. I wish I, more I local kids would just do it and just spread their wings, come back. That's what I always. That's what I'm always telling um, the kids like who you know who are. 16, 17, 18. I'm like, dude, go and you only have to do three years right now. 
You oh do, yeah, yeah, you do. I think right now because recruiting is 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 hurting. You, don't, I, I want to say, can't don't quote me on it, but I think you have to you have to sign up for three years before when we signed up. I think it was four. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can sign up for three years. Dude, you know how fast those first three years go in the military. And if yeah. you just make it part of your plan to just say, hey, I'm only going to do three years and then I'm going to punch out, like, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's a great plan. You get to do so much, right? You get to, like, you get to, you get to, I think I would say, like, one, like, serve yourself. Um, and then two, serve the country. And you're serving yourself because you're putting you're, you're putting yourself outside of this comfort bubble that you lived in for so long. And you're saying like, "All right, take me like, like I want to push myself. I want to challenge myself. You can do jobs like, um, you know, like there's so many jobs that you can do in the military. Yeah. And what I always tell people is like, do a job in the military that you can't do anywhere else. Like. Like, I wish I had done that. Right? Like, you I can't just go that. and, like, jump out of airplanes and rescue people in the night, like, at, at a lot of different places. So I was like, that's what I want to do. Like, I want to do something that's, like, crazy, you know, like that nice. I can only do in the military. And then and then do that job and and then get out. That's so – you're kind of striking on something. I never thought of it that way. I was told, you know, my dad comes from nothing. Like, yeah. he was basically fending for himself since he was, like, 15. Yeah. Waikiki, you know, teaching lessons, and um, I, he, he, he never thought about entrepreneurship or wealth building, business. Like that's, you know, that's for me to maybe pass on. But uh, he was like, learn a trade, join the military, go to college. You're already failing out of college, so yeah. it's learn a trade. Yeah. Which I know you don't want to work that hard. Which I ended up working that hard anyways as yeah. an honorary. Yeah. But he's like, I know you don't want that smoke, so go join the military. And that sort of like 401k IRA safe attitude towards retirement and benefits. I was like, let me get a job that I could get a job doing it when I get out. Yeah. But you're a total opposite. You're like, do yeah. something you could never do otherwise work on yourself, which is kind of more in line with the way I think now. Like, yeah. Just work on you. Just become something new and different. And yeah. e- evolve. Yeah. You, but a new version. Yeah. And then you can always use the GI Bill, go learn a trade, yeah. whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. But I went into a job act. It's really helped me in life. So that's the thing. You can't go wrong. Whether you pick this job or that job, you'll grow in those three years. Yep. But uh, it's helped me. You know, like in my real estate world, all that MST. So in the Coast Guard, I did, uh, for people at home, I did um, marine safety and security. We did litigious type of stuff, responding to oil pollution or inspecting ships for compliance. That helps me as a real estate professional because I know, you know, I can read law and interpret that kind of thing, yeah. you know. Yep. But, uh, but it'd been cooler if I drove boats or did something cool, you know. I could still learn how to be a real estate agent. Yeah. So. Well, they always say the two best jobs in the Coast Guard ended with ST, AST and MST. Oh, uh, yeah. And we both did that. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That was, that's what everyone on the boat said. The two best jobs end with ST. I can see that. And so, like, if, if the AST thing didn't work out for me, I was going to go MST. Were you? Yeah. Oh, I don't think you'd be happy, bro. No, I don't, I don't think, think so either. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, yeah. And th- that's, like, and then, like, the second part of my advice to people who join the military is, like, hey, like, you also have to get out when you know you're supposed to get out as well because that comfort creeps in in the military also because then you get so like you're uncomfortable for these first couple of years because you are you're you're the new you're the new guy you're the new you're the new person and you're in all these training environments and it's like boot camp to a school to in your syllabus to learn how to actually do your job and the whole time you're out of your comfort zone and there's all these um there's all these what do you call it like professional growth points put on you that you have to reach and if you don't reach them you're in trouble in one way or another right um so you so you're never comfortable then you reach all those points and then the ultra comfort sets in where you're like oh i've made it that's the most dangerous place that you can be in because that's when like one like you get complacent in very dangerous jobs like whether you're doing jumping out of a helicopter or you're going in the middle of the night to do pollution response and you, you're complacent, yeah. like that's how people end up getting hurt. Um, mm-hmm. But sort of that aside is like when knowing when it's time to 
throw in the towel and like not necessarily throw in the towel, like knowing when it's time where you've got everything you needed from that and you've given what you came to give. And you're like not, now it's yeah. next. You're not giving back. At, when I got out in 2012, so they were like off of active. People were saying, well, where are you going to live? What are you going to eat? Right. And, the, and I was like, what? And, and I believed it too. Cause I had had this goal. I'm going to be a millionaire through real estate by age 35. But that Coast Guard unit beat that out of me. They're like, yeah. no, you can't do yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, and then I was disgruntled and insubordinate. And so I needed to leave. They should have been like, good, you should go. You're not a fit for this. Right. But they were like, what are you going to eat? Where are you yeah. going to live? And I was like, I get it. It's a bad economic time coming off of 2008. Yeah. But a lot of people who I think, I can't be the worst of the worst out there, you know, in terms of my grit and my work ethic. Yeah. And they're eating and making it. And, and so, yeah, yeah, like my agent, Mahe, her, her, her fiance and all, she, uh, he, she made the comment that he talks about retirement a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, well, he's in the army. That's what they do in the military. You talk about retirement. You That's know? all you do. Yeah. yeah. So and I, everyone panics right before retirement. And then all those questions that they were asking you, what are you going to do? They were never even asking you that question. They were asking themselves that question wow. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do after the Coast Guard? What am I going to do? Yeah. I'm going to live my best life. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. doing well, it. So. The biggest thing for me was like, like in my career field, like there's like a, <laughs> there's a time when your body says like, dude, stop, mm -hmm. stop. And your mind as well. Like, um, like just to get deep, like. I'm beat up. I've been slammed into the sides of boats so many times, going so fast on the end of a cable under a helicopter. Um, and just the amount of times that I've been on duty and like woken up in the middle of the night and put into really stressful environments. Um, I think it's like all those things have caught up with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's for me, it's time. Yeah. It's that's time. So, so the next chapter is like, I'm not, I, 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 I'm acknowledging that I'm acknowledging that I'm not the same as I was 10 years ago. And there's definitely some things about me that have changed. Um, there's some things that have changed for the better, but there's also some things that have changed for the worst because, um, I, I kind of look at it like there's, um, you know, you're scared to do the job and you're scared to not do the job, more scared mm. to not do the job, right? Like, that's where it comes where people are like, well, what are you going to do? Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to, um, I'm going to, Malia and I are going to lean into our business and I'm so excited about that. I leaning saying, into you already films. have a bridge like, yeah. built to the, yeah. to the next island. I'm going to lean into that big time. And, uh, I, it's, it's one of those businesses that, like it just wants to take off and we've built such great relationships uh, along the way. Um, and in Hawaii, you being the first relationship, yeah. right? Like that's a cool, I think that's a really cool story. I know I talked about it with Kenji. Yeah, we can talk about yeah. it, but I want to, but I do want to talk about you and what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, like you have the media business, you, yeah. you do well, but yeah. you could do so much more if you were, your yeah. time was all free to focus on I it. think, yeah, I think when the time is more free and I have more time to be um creative again I'm like i'm really excited to lean into some creative projects i don't know exactly what those are going to be but i'm really passionate about some things right now like i'm really i'm really passionate about people who are um living their values and like living sort of like values that are not popular mm -hmm. um yeah. like a few people that like, honestly, like, a few people that come to mind who have inspired me so much, like, um, Joel Centeo has inspired me so much. Like, when I saw their documentary come out about them he selling everything. One? Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I gotta watch it. I can't, I, I think it's called Beach to Farm, but I can't remember exactly oh, what I it's called. It. But okay. it's so cool. It's just really raw, and it's, like, their life changing and them moving and, like, moving to a farm and starting this farm. And I just, I think it's really cool because, like, to a lot of people, that's crazy, right? But mm -hmm. that documentary, Malia and I watched it, and I told Joel this already, but like that inspired us to move to Wailua. Oh, really? Because I'm like, whoa, that, that's the life that I, I, I love that life. Like I wanna live that life with my family. Um, 
So there's been people like that who've really inspired me. And then there's um, um, Kumu Kuipo down the street. Uh, she runs a nonprofit called um, Namea Kupono, and she has a lo'i, like, on her property. And it's, it's so, it's like, it's so cool to me that these people, they're doing this, like, they're living this, like, modern, like, they're, like, living in, like, two worlds, it seems like, like, this modern world that we have to live in, but then, like, also, like, holding on to the values that make that like make us who we are to be from Hawaii and to be Hawaiian like that is that's who we are like people don't think about like oh you're from Hawaii you know you have a real estate business like that's not what makes us who yeah, we yeah. are like what makes us who we are the first question that they're going to ask is like do you know how to surf yeah, yeah. and we can say yes like that's really cool like that's a really cool start i want to be like i want to say yes to myself to more of those things yeah and i want to um dive into more of that especially now that my kids are getting older i want to be able to take them you know more surfing more fishing l- learn to do these things together like my dad was really good about doing that with us and i want to be able to do that with my kids because i think it's 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 great for us as a family. It's great for them personally. It's great for the community. Mm-hmm. It's like what I, I feel like it's what like I'm supposed to be doing. I think, yeah, man, that's, that's all super well said. I think you, you guys inspire me, right? So Thanks, the way Joel, man. I mean, of course, Joel, it, Joel's always been Mr. Aloha. I went to high school with him. Yeah. Um, but he's more like kind of out of reach to me. Although I'll, I'll get him in here to talk eventually, but, uh, Oh yeah. But, you guys, you know, like I helped you guys buy your home when you came back yeah. and yeah. it was a block away from me. Yeah. And then you called me and you're like, we want to move to Wailua. Yeah. And then I see it, you know, I see it unfold and I'm like, yeah, that's what I moved home to do too. And so I think that it's in, it's important to at least me to see you guys live the way you are and model it. And, and it's with your media skills, if you were to do that and put that out to the world yeah, to the degree that you're comfortable showcasing your family you know yeah i think it i think it could be huge i think you crush whatever we do on youtube by thousands like exponentially in terms of viewership and followership for sure yeah 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 i've been thinking about that a lot lately with just trying to like stay true like how can because i love doing video malia is an amazing photographer i'm like there's more to these skill sets and this passion than um doing real estate forever. Real estate's great. I love it. Um, yeah. But, but I think there's, there's definitely like, there's another chapter yeah, to yeah. it. Like, but um, the, the thing about the real estate business for us has been like, not so much exactly what we're doing, but like how we're doing it. Like we're growing a business together and that is uh, like the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. Like Malia and I growing a business together yeah. and getting to work together and being our own bosses and like getting to a point where, oh man, we can do this. Like we can, this can support our family. Yeah. No, you guys. It's cool. You guys are special, man. It's cool. Thanks, do you guys fight <laughs> about the business ever? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah not yeah. all the time, but like we definitely like disagree with certain things or um, not nothing crazy though. Like yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty good. And we always, you know, put, we always put like family before the business, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You got, I mean, again, it's inspirational to me because you, I've gone hard in these last years on the business and now I'm like catching up with the family. And that's, you know, it's just who I am. I'm obsessive. And yeah. so I'm okay. I, I got my peace with it, but I have to, I have to like play catch up too. I like, yeah. give, like give my wife and my kids yeah. more now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That you mentioned like, so briefly you came home, you were like, Hey, I want to buy this house. So we, we buy it. Yeah. I managed the renovation. Yeah. That was so part cool. Part of it before you came home. But then you call me like a year later and you're like, we need to sell. Yeah. And we need to make this. And I'm like, there's no reason why you should be able to sell it for that much. Like, that's too much. Yeah. But if you guys want to try, I'm down. Yeah. And we sold it for that and more. Yeah. Um, a lot to do with your photography and staging and all that. It was beautiful. And and yeah, like, it's just, you guys, it's if people believe in what you put out, you get back. Like, you guys are an example. You guys are like, we're oh, just going to send dude. it. We're going to send it and it's going to work. And yeah. Like, 
it's, it's actually working. You, it's actually working. Yeah, we're just yeah. gonna keep and like the, like we're just like gonna keep sending it. We've been sending it forever. Like, <laughs> like when Malia and I got engaged, we were I think we were eighteen years old. Really, eighteen, maybe nineteen. It was before I joined the Coast Guard. Oh. And I joined the Coast Guard at nineteen, so it was it was I was eighteen. Like, I think I was nineteen. We got engaged, and I worked at Starbucks, and she uh, was a lifeguard at the pool. And everyone's like, what, you know, what are you guys going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't even think of this. Like, what are you going to do? F- like, you know, like people are asking you these questions like, like well, there's, you gotta- a, there's a straight line and you're not walking it. There's a straight line and you're not walking it. Yeah. Like you guys are too young. Mm-hmm. And then, and you know, the next thing, you know, like join the Coast Guard. I'm like, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a rescue swimmer. Oh, dude, come on. No, you're never going to make it. So-and-so didn't make it. I'm like, well, let me try. Yeah. Okay. Do this. And then, you know, like buying houses, like when we bought our first house in Milani, um, <laughs> everyone's like, that's too expensive. You're going to, it's going to be the worst decision you ever made. It was the best decision we ever made. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, and then. And how old were you when you bought your first house? Um, 20, 22. Just sending it. You're not supposed to know that much yeah. about buying houses. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know anything. Yeah. But you know what? I think, I think one of the things is I've always been, I've always been good at taking good advice. Yeah. I, yep. I, and I'll stand by that. And, and I'm not always happy with the advice at first because it's challenging. Good <laughs> yeah. advice is generally like very challenging. Mm. You've you've given me good advice before, and I was like, man, like this. Like it, oh, I like, didn't, uh, I didn't, I knew I like kind of offended you or rubbed you the wrong way, but mm-hmm. I think it's probably more than I understood. <laughs> but it w- look look at us now, like it's the best thing that ever happened to us. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> You're like, dude, you have to do this. Like you can't go on. So okay, for everyone listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when, when <laughs> we moved back to Hawaii, I'm like, Derek, I got this business called Pure Films. I make dope real estate videos. And Derek w- had just dove, just finished up a project of like this townhouse. And it was so nice. You made it, you guys made it so beautiful. And I'm like, Hey, can I have, can you let me come in and shoot it? And like, maybe put you in front of the camera. And you're like, yeah. And then we shoot it. And um, and then Derek goes, Hey, like in order for you to make this a business, I think you're going to need to add photography. And I, I think you literally only said it like that. And I was like, <laughs> no, we don't. Like, I think we can do this with just the video. And you're like, I don't think so. And, and <laughs> I would, yeah, right, yeah, but you yeah. weren't like being like a dick about it. I was trying it. not to be mean, but I, but I felt very convicted because I was like, I'm in this space. I have listings. And I came out the gates too back then. Like I had a lot of listings and as a newer agent. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not normal. And yeah. so I was like, I know listings and brah, if I, cause I, you know what I was thinking? Cause I was like, I want to use you, but also I may have to coordinate keys and entry and yep. I'm going to have to use someone for tar- photography and then yeah. use you for video. Yeah. And I'm going to do it cause you're my guy. And you did it. You did yeah. it for a while. Did we you just yeah. use you on the side for video? Yeah. And I was like, I'm want, but Bro, if you guys would just do photos, it'd be so much better. So I know how that would affect the other agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we started, and then and then Iona, another mutual friend that we had, um, Ikoma oh, Mai yeah, staging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she reached out to us and she's like, "Hey, I staged this house and it's beautiful in Milani, and um, they don't have anyone to shoot it. They want to do photos and videos. Can you guys do that?" And it was just one of those things where like, "Oh, sh- yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Like kind of like a yeah. fake it till you make it kind of thing, and then we did it, and it came out pretty good. Like the video was really good, and and uh, and the photos came out good. Like Malia just sent it, just went in there and just did it, um, and it came out and it came out pretty good. And we we're like, ah, oh, but it's not as good as like these. Like look at this listing. Like oh my god, that's amazing. How do we get? How do we achieve that? How do we yeah. achieve that? And that was um, three years ago, and now that was. Yeah, three years ago, and then now we've just been like slowly, like just like, like fine tuning our craft and adding things to it and taking things away sometimes. Yeah. Um, testing the waters with things, um, and it's just it's like it's going great. We're like organically building, like great relationships, yeah. and I, that's what I say. Like we don't we don't we don't we don't advertise. We don't slide into people's DMs. We don't like throw out gimmicky solutions. Business. We're not begging for business. Yeah. Um, I think people, a lot, we have a lot of people now who follow us at, um, who are in the, the real estate industry and the design industry. 
and they see our work and I think there comes a time when they have a project and they go, oh, dude, we want the full, we want the full thing, you know, and they hit us up and they're like, hey, we want the Pure Films full package and then yeah. we, we show up and we do like your great work for them. And, but it's mostly yeah. like, it's like, I don't know, it's a relationship. Like they appreciate us and we appreciate them. Yeah. It's not like, it's, it's more than, what we do is I think more than a business transaction. Maybe I, I just think that way, but no, I, I really feel like it. I well, I we know each other from a long time. Yeah. And like I love you guys, so I see it differently. But I know, I I know what they're experiencing. I see it, they're they're refreshed. They're like, fuck, like this is awesome. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. We have this in our industry now instead of the the things that we have been accustomed to. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, for That's sure. That's cool. And we love just keeping it as local as we can, you know, like whether it's like using local music or I, it's my favorite yes. thing to do. It's like, well, you get to sh like we get to showcase like our homes with like our favorite songs, you know, and like yeah. Instagram has made that like a beautiful reality, you know, like to so cool. where you j can just go on and pick all these songs with like all you know, these local I'm gonna bands. Have the, I'm going to have our editors at the end of this um, throw out, put that recent listing you did for us. That was so I'll have fun. Them, I'll have them put it at the end of this for the YouTube one. Cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, when you guys started putting out those reels, those like yeah, those Instagrammable yeah, 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 clips, yeah. Yeah. we had a period where we didn't have a listing and yeah. I was like, brah, I need another home to sell so that I can get one of these. Yeah. I didn't care about the listing. I wanted the, the piece of media that you guys would make. Yeah, that's so cool. I was like, yeah, I want, the, I want the media. And yeah. especially, like, when someone like you comes along, I'm like, oh, Derek, I got to give him, like, a fire song. Like, you and Mahe, <laughs> like, I got, oh, okay. So, like, generally, like, like we have editors. Like, I have, we have a photo editor and we have a video editor, and they're awesome. That they're was the other awesome. thing you, that I said, yeah, where you guys are like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, like like for sometimes like Edit. like for places like that or you know clients, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this one because I yeah, know yeah. like I want to make this. Yeah. Like I want Derek and Mahi to love this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I want to use a song that I know they're gonna like. But, they're well, jamming right now. Wasn't that the other thing where you, I was like, hey, dude, you need you need to do editing or I have an editing leverage. Yes, that was the other thing because yeah, it, where you're like, nah, no, we yeah. we can't let go of our baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, nah, but if you just. Train them your way, like they should be able to do it as good or sometimes better. And do that. yeah, and, and you're and like, now, nah, no way. Yep. And now, <laughs> dude, we have an awesome editor. Michael's, he's the best. Yeah. And then we have Jen. She's our photo editor, and she's the best. Um, and usually, like what they do, I'm like, oh, that's better than what I would have done. Actually, really? yeah. That's part of being a, a business owner and a leader. You know? It's cool. That's cool. It's new to us, and you can be surfing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Editing. It's freed up so much time. I would say. I'd say like yeah, Michael probably does about eighty percent of um, the on work the video on too? the videos on the wow. video side. That's cool. And then uh, Jen does about probably eighty percent on the photo side. Oh, Malia sick. still like fine tunes her photos um, to give them like that special like that special sparkle. Um, the but, results uh, are there. It's it's thanks. and I see all the younger cool like eh, I don't want to throw shade like but like the cool agents. They're all using you. you. Yeah. Even if it's like someone I butted heads with in a oh, transaction yeah. and we're yeah. not friends or yeah. whatever, I still see it. And I'm like, all those cool agents are like using Mark and Malia, which is super cool. Dude, we work with so much like good people. Yeah. It's so great. And like yeah. we, there's been times in the past where we've worked with people and we just like didn't 100% click and it's like totally okay. It's you okay. know, it's totally okay. Like we, 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 like the group of people that we work with now is like, it's like there's we've built relationships like we're in like the relationship business where they trust us yeah and we trust them and um so many of like 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 you guys for example like i know when i show up like the place is gonna look amazing like that last listing that we did oh well that's that's not me that's our stagers i know our, that's you know. that was that was genie yeah it's genie. genie's Shout awesome to genie, yeah. yep genie is awesome that's why like i know like when i show up to like your guys' place or a place that um, that Dana from like Redesign does. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I know it's gonna. It's like you have a. I canvas. want to come and do it. Yeah, I want yeah. to come and do it. Yeah. 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 Me like media is like your medium for relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And like positivity. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What to? What would you say to Hawaii? To your family? To, you know, like what's a, a message you would leave Hawaii with as we close this up? Oh man, I think something that's like been on my mind lately is um, do the things that you know are right. 
you're always gonna know you're always gonna know you're always gonna know what you don't want to do um, and sometimes that's like the easiest way um, to kind of find the path to doing it is to doing what it is that you do want to do um, so if there's something that you want to do like go and do it set goals that seem unachievable to people because when you set those goals they excite you so much that you're generally like you're gonna probably gonna hit them if you set really unexciting goals and you're not excited and it doesn't do anything for you, then you're probably not going to hit those. Mm. Um, so set your goals, do the things that are important to you, um, and don't do things that you don't want to do. Wow. <laughs> pretty simple but pretty strong. Yeah, it's amazing. Once you, once you realize you can or someone who you have confidence in reciprocates back that you can, yeah. so then they give you that confidence, oh, I guess I can. Yeah. It's amazing you're capable of even more than what you and that person agreed upon you can. You're capable of more than that. Yeah. And that just leads to a better existence on this earth, right? Yeah, it does. Better time spent. It does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Shout outs to your wife. Shout your out to Malia. Your amazing wife. Yeah. And, and your family, your whole family. Your mom will like message me, love you, you're, you're awesome. She's our number one fan. Yeah. She's the one throwing off our algorithm in Instagram, I think, <laughs> where it's like family is just the only people who comment. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I miss them being my neighbors. But uh, yeah, shout out to your squad, bro. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Love you, bro. Yeah, I love you too, bro. <laughs>